you look very beautiful you've got your cameraman your artist your hairdresser <laughs> i know he's very multi-talented yeah. well uh, done yes <laughs> <laughs> well. Today we're in Cape Town, South Africa, speaking with female millennial entrepreneur Ntabi. Thank you so much for being on the I show, Ntabi. Yes. Did I pronounce that properly? Yes, you did. Yes. <laughs> and I can't wait to hear your story about yeah. how you went from pre-entrepreneur to entrepreneur okay. in South Africa. Okay. How did it happen? Oh, well, like, um, let me just give you a background. Uh, I grew up in a township in Johannesburg. And, and for those of us who don't know what a township is, it's the ghetto. <laughs> it's I'm the sure in the States you call it the, the, the ghetto. So yeah. Yeah. So I grew up in the ghetto. And um, as I was growing up, like, there was not a lot of inspiration around uh, based on like what has happened before, like riots and everything else. A lot of people were not really inspired. But there was just something inside me that said, this is not how my life is going to end up. And also I grew up seeing my dad having informal businesses and I was very inspired and I was also involved in that selling vegetables over the weekend and helped them, helping to package them, selling big ices to informal segments so that they'd be able to pull their drinks and be able to sell them. So in the morning I'll wake up at 3 to assist him to load them, offload them when he brings them, so things like that. And wow. my mom also was a seamstress, she used to make beautiful garments uh, for people who, who were getting married and she would bake the cakes and everything else and at times I had to wake up very early in the morning to go and sell food in the clinic next to home. So I, I saw that happening and I thought wow this, I want to take it in another level. However there was this uh, belief that when you, you're, you're black, you, you, you're born in uh, you know, in a ghetto, there's no way you can start a business. So I wanted to prove to myself that I can create a life that I desire for myself and also the life that can be inspiring, inspiration to a lot of other uh, young people also in the ghettos where I come from, you know, and also that they, that there was, it was just a dream uh, for me to give something back to my community. And that's the reason why I started my own business. I studied engineering. I've worked in corporate companies like Converti Life. I've been a bond originator, but that was just not resonating with my soul. Then I had to find myself, and eventually I was in economic development where I did uh, visibility studies for the Department of Trade and Industry here in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And after I delivered that study, and also what I went through during the whole process because it was based on skins and hides and manufacturers in South Africa and I was traveling in all provinces doing the research understanding what is the skins and hides and manufacturing all about and it was about the the animal skins of which the animal skins that we use for food consumption and those skins instead of being dumped a value can be added to them and I also looked at the what was happening in our country and a lot of people lost their jobs and a lot of companies closed down due to recession and I thought okay I felt like I can be a hero and I can do something and in that particular uh, sector in our, our country and I decided to go into manufacturing and I've always had passion for designing and yeah. Wow. That's how I did it. <sighs> that was a lot. No, I mean that's amazing. I mean from your childhood and yeah. seeing your parents be entrepreneurial because you had to yeah. to survive and selling ice and vegetables yeah. and helping your mom with the seamstress yeah. work at the, the pieces of, of, of clothing and fashion that she yeah. created and cakes. Yeah. I mean having to wake up at three in the morning yeah. and then also growing up with what sounds like a, a limiting belief yeah. that because of the color of your skin, because of where you were born, yeah. Mm -hmm anything outside of what you've known maybe is not reachable True. and then having something inside of you which I find fascinating yeah. that you felt that there was something to prove to yourself yeah. and that's something being this limiting belief 
I have to I have to see that it's not really true. Yeah. What was it? I mean, it, people these days we have limiting beliefs yeah. that keep us from moving for, for, forward and doing things that we want to do that are in our hearts. Yeah. And when you have it are all around in your community, and I speak from experience, also yes, coming yes. from a ghetto. Yeah. Um. How? How do? You, how did you find yourself? How did you find this inner strength and? inner curiosity to say, you know what, I'm going to be bold, Yeah. do what most people don't do, put myself out there, Yeah. and go further or do differently than most of the people that I know, if not everyone. Yeah. Where does that come um, from? I, I, I think that, okay, I, I don't know where it's coming from for a whole lot of other people, but for me, it's it, it was all about making a difference, you know, just the thought of having to make a difference that's where it came from and I knew that if I would do it the same way that they've done it I will end up in the same position where we were so that thinking you know thinking outside the box you know looking at the at the situation and trying to find a solution to it and say okay what is it that I can do differently and that that I could do differently was uh, beyond the limiting uh, my self limiting beliefs and also what I've been taught, you know. So I just had to believe that my dreams will come true. Believe that I could uplift myself, you know. Believe that, you know, uh, I can become that I want to become. And also thanks to having TVs, you see people they're successful, you see them making it, and you you just know that I'm gonna get that one day. I'm going to become. So when you started off on your journey of proving this limiting yeah. belief incorrectly, incorrect, right, that even though I'm black, even though I'm from the ghetto, yeah. I can still make it, did you 100% believe you'd make it? I did. I did, definitely. Wow. Uh, one thing for That's sure awesome. is uh, I knew that uh, if I would think of my color limiting me or where I come from limiting me, I'll never get anywhere. So no matter what and how I've been treated, you know, by the other society that I'm not being black, then they, they're not coming from the ghettos. Obviously they, they would treat you differently, but because I knew who I am, I knew what I want to become and I just kept on pressing on, you know, it wasn't easy, but I just had to shut myself from that that was destruction. And I knew that if I would hear the voices, people talking, people trying to close the doors when I want to really go through and make it. And I knew that if I allow that, that then will crush myself. It's all about having a belief in yourself as a person and saying, no matter what, I want this, I'm not giving up, and I'm not going to stop until I get there. So, I mean, that's super inspirational, right? Did yeah. you... And, and I can see how easily it could be from the outside community yeah. seeing someone who comes from where you come from come yeah. up and say, hey, I actually am yeah. ready to do the same thing you're doing. I can see how there could be an interesting yeah. reaction from that end. But what was the reaction from your community? Was it supportive or was it sort of like, who do you think you are? Or were yeah. they like, you're <laughs> awesome, yay, I want to be like you. Well, look, that from not even looking at the society, that's who can home basically my parents before I could even think of the society my dad just you know had a sit down talk with me and say please just don't leave your job you know don't even think about starting a business business is for the light-skinned community it's for the white people so we blacks we don't have their understanding about business we don't know what is business we cannot not have a nine to five job and think that we can have businesses and make them a success. So that also was a drive for me to say, you know, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to do it and wow. I'm going to make it happen. And I did it. And he was very proud to see my first business. And when he retired from his work, actually, he was helping me with my first business venture before this one. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. And what a beautiful, I mean, I'm sure he said it from the best place of his heart. Yeah. Not yeah, to see I, you fail. Yeah. But then you took that and, and ran with it. And I you said, did. And I'm going to prove you wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and when I had like the, the, the first uh, uh, story published, 
and everyone was excited. They didn't even know at home that there's such a story. They had like our neighbors running home and say, oh my gosh, did you see her? And everyone was excited. So you do become an inspiration to a whole lot of other people that like uh, growing in the township and you do inspire them to make their businesses formal.